Hello viewers, Super GT here. So the Mercedes F1 car of 2017 has been added into Gran Turismo Sport as part of the 1.22 update at the end of July. So here it is, the Mercedes AMG F1 W08 EQ Power Plus 2017, to give it its full ridiculously long name, costing uh, 2 million credits. So yeah, you're gonna have to break the bank once again to get this thing into your garage there are two options for it so you can buy this car just the the standard car you can also buy this color variation so you can just choose it in whatever color you like because the car isn't paintable you can't you know you can't just put a ferrari livery on it you can see here you can make it red orange uh, yellow you can make it look somewhat like a ferrari a mclaren a renault but you can't actually just put uh, actual liveries on it so that's the reason why you've got this this variation car as well so two choices the, it's going to break the bank to, to to get the car basically two million each but uh, they added uh, microtransactions into the game so you can actually buy all of the cars with real cash now if you really want to do that uh, on the side note they've added a couple of events in the career mode one of them specific to the car as you can see here one of the new track one of the Nürburgring G, uh, GP circuit and I'm gonna give it a go around Suzuka so I felt like giving it a try around a circuit that they actually drove in 2017 so of course that fantasy circuit isn't in the F1 calendar Nürburgring has been but it wasn't in 2017 so we can drive the 2017 Mercedes F1 car on a circuit that they did drive in 2017. Incidentally, the uh, pole lap around here was uh, a 127.3 by uh, Lewis Hamilton in, uh, in 2017. So driving this car around the circuit, that's I suppose that's the benchmark. Although I don't know ex the exact configuration of this car that they bought to the game because obviously uh, throughout the year they're always upgrading the cars with different parts. Uh, you might notice there on the back of the car, the DRS wing sort of opens itself up. Uh, I'm not doing that, it just does it itself. So the car really grippy, really, really grippy indeed. Probably the grippiest car in the world. Absolutely flying through the S's here at Suzuka. Making sure work of the, uh, the AI, who are pretty just awful uh, most of the time. And the car is... I mean, you think it's really sort of on rails, really easy to drive. It kind of is through the fast corners. And I think it's just through the slower corners and on downshifting. When you're slowing down, when you're going through the slow corners, that's where it's actually really hard. So into here, you're going really deep. And uh, something I also noticed, the, the gear indicator is well out. This car has eight gears, obviously quite a lot. Most race cars have maybe six or seven, so I'm having a few more. So you see, this is to go down into the fourth gear or third gear actually for spoon. But I felt like actually keeping a couple of gears above that is a lot better because the traction control is really hard to manage on the exits of the corners. As soon as you get on that throttle, it really does want to slide around. If you're not, or sorry, if you are turning fully, it will just spin. It's really that bad. So it's, well, it's not bad. It's just very difficult to drive. As you, as you probably might not expect, but in the slow corners it does feel quite clumsy, uh, especially like through that chicane we just went through. Direction change is quite, uh, quite tough. Here's the cockpit view. Now there's uh, plenty of information on the dash. It doesn't seem to really change other than the gear uh, that we have selected, and the rest of the numbers don't really change about. So the cockpit view, fairly. Uh, obviously a very low down car, quite tricky to see over the top, visibility is at a premium and we have this weird, I don't even know what that thing is, on the front of the car it's blocking uh, a fair amount of our view, up the inside, clean move as clean as it, as clean as it gets really now, uh, yeah, so we're speaking about that um, thing on the front of the car, obviously uh, no halo in 2017 so visibility, you can actually see up, upwards a bit of course there's no threat in when you're playing a game of a car coming down and actually killing you and we uh, come out of the hairpin that's uh, it's fairly tricky as I said the slow corners are weird uh, it goes through the fast corners really well it's just on the exit of the corners 
on the traction and downshifting into slow corners. So that's where this car is feels really weird. Basically, coming out of spoon, it, it just flies. It has so much, uh, has so much grip and a lot of confidence going through these fast corners. There's, uh, is of course a lot of them at Suzuka. So let's see what our lap time is going to be as we come up to the end of our first full lap. You see that big correction for the first part of the chicane. Tentative on the throttle coming out of the final corner. 135. Now I don't know what the race pace was like at Suzuka 2017. Now, obviously pole lap, as we go for a scintillating hunch, pole lap is always, almost always a couple of seconds quicker than what you're going to be doing in a race. So a 127 during the race, uh, sorry, uh, for pole position in F1 last year isn't going to mean they, they were doing that during the race. So if I can get down to a low 130 something, then I might be something close. But I actually watched the pole lap of Lewis Hamilton and I'm nowhere near. Smashing into the back of him, a German in a red car. Sounds familiar. So we're going to go flying past him, eventually take the lead. The, the AI, as we know, they're not that great. Were quite slow indeed. So eventually around the outside, they're all driving the uh, colour variation model. I'm driving uh, the normal model. So putting away this view here, I felt like this is the best view to drive this car in. The, the chase cam, it, it doesn't really work, and it, and it has never really worked in sort of these F1 cars. You play if if you play F1 game, or any of the F1 games in the chase cam, I I, I can kind of find that weird. And you don't really see that on YouTube, you don't really see anyone playing it in the chase cam. Although it is of course all personal preference of course. And for me this is the best view, the cockpit is obviously the most realistic. Uh, visibility is very difficult though, uh, especially with the wheel turning. As soon as you're, you're turning the wheel you can't really see directly forwards. Because your hand and the wheel is blocking your view. So this view I think is the best sort of um, best way to negate all of those disadvantages of the, the viewpoints and um, eventually getting quite comfortable this is lap number five setting a 134 so far let's see what we can do at this lap a 133.3 so not too bad just by getting, uh, going past some traffic so we're going to go for a very fast forwarded lap here we can imagine that this car is uh, <laughs> like the um, SRT Tomahawk obviously it's nowhere near that level Although it'd be interesting to see what this car can do around some of the circuits compared to, let's say, Group 2. I mean, Group 2 around here is about 146, 147 for a really good lap. So this is maybe 15 seconds quicker. So quite a big difference. Well, it's, it's a massive difference when you think about it. So there, 133 again. So fairly consistent. It's just I'm not, not really as good. Or I can't really... I don't feel as though I'm confident enough to push the car to the absolute limit especially in direction changes and in the slow speed corners. If you just watch Lewis Hamilton's lap, it's so smooth, his pole lap around here. So, so smooth. And uh, he obviously has so much confidence, which I just don't have. Now, of course, I'm playing on the controller, which isn't, you know, it's not the best medium, I don't think, for this kind of car. You do really want to be on a wheel, ideally. So let's listen for a little bit for the remainder of this lap. I'll let you just hear the engine notes. So having a massive moment on the exit of the final chicane, you might have noticed I put this, that lap was on zero TCS, uh, it still is on zero TCS, so trying to drive the car without any traction control is, is really difficult on, on a controller. Uh, you do really have to be 
very, very patient. You see they're having big moments where the car kind of wants to bite on you and crossing the line eventually after 10 laps to win the race quite easily. Now the car is really hard to drive and now if it was a daily race it would be an absolute mess. No, there's no doubt about that. We're going to give it a go around another circuit they drive in the 2017 calendar, uh, Interlagos in Brazil. So see how the car performs. We're going to test it out in the cockpit view. Now this is one of the shortest circuits in, on the calendar. Uh, pole time around here is about 1.08 I think it was last year, 1.08. Point three, I think it was Valtteri Bottas, in fact, on pole. But and he, and he was driving this car, so anything around about that will be doing well. And of course, obviously, they have their party mode, whatever, in, in F1, makes them quite significantly, significantly quicker for that last part of Q3. But during the race pace, they'll be a little bit slower, probably about 1 at 1 for the, the majority of the race. So, from the inside, of the AI. AI lives obviously don't matter. That's the movement I've uh, created. Now, uh, just winding around up into turn, I don't even know. Now, whenever I come around this corner, I'm always thinking about is that block? Just It just comes to my head every time. You see a massive moment again, really uh, struggling to keep the car under control. It's an absolute monster. It's not easy to drive. It really isn't. So, pulling away, going to change back to the viewpoint which we feel a lot more comfortable in. So we now wind around back onto the main straight into Lagos and we can go about setting our first proper lap time. Breaking so late in, in most cars. And well actually we're not going to talk about that for a moment. We're going to talk about that because we spun around. Uh, continuing. Now the braking points are, uh, are just absolutely crazy in this car. You can brake so so late. You're going into most corners at or a lot of corners at 200 miles an hour. You can brake you know less than 100 meters before the corner and go down significant amounts of speed. It really is crazy the performance of this machine. It isn't really quite like anything else I've driven. And I actually haven't driven the SRT Tomahawk yet or a lot of these Grip X cars. This thing really is very very fast indeed. As I mean you probably expect that because it's a Formula 1 car so I mean I'm stating the obvious here really so flying past a couple of these guys it, it does take quite a long time to get used to this car it's a good addition I think to the game it's welcome to see it's welcome to see this kind of uh, addition to the game and of course there's plenty of other uh, content added to the game as part of this July update and if you'd like to see all of that then do look on the channel I've got plenty of videos and live streams for all of that and of course subscribe if you would like to see more of that so it's going to wind out this video or wind out this race and this lap I'm going to finish in third couldn't quite get to grips excuse the pun with the car so in addition yeah we've got the uh, six other cars like Mazda 787B really good addition to the game and of course we've got the new circuit uh, Saint Croix in France it's a weird circuit that and again not featuring in this video, but it will feature in other live streams and videos, so check them out on the channel. So there we go guys, let me know your thoughts on the Mercedes in Gran Turismo Sport, let me know your thoughts on, on anything, really the way it drives, would it be good as a daily race, does it cost too much, because it's really hard to get credits in this game, but yeah, let me know your thoughts, and if you did enjoy the video, please do hit that like button and subscribe if you would like to see more. I thank you very much for watching, as always, guys. I shall see you next time. Goodbye. Listen.